Hi everyone, thank you for listening to this talk. My name is Pravina and I'm currently a graduate student at the Memorial University of Newfoundland. My research currently involves applying computational techniques to better understand how our brain perceives music. Today I'm presenting my work with ProfCare on a web-based platform that aims to capture kinesthetic measures of recovering stroke patients as they repeatedly engage in a music-based serious game for tele-rehabilitation. We'll start off with a short background on the concepts that our system centers around, talk about how our web platform differs from existing work, and then move on to the capabilities of our web-based monitoring system. Tele-rehabilitation is a way of conducting physiotherapy remotely over distance over telecommunication networks or online. It allows patients to interact with their providers remotely and encompasses a range of rehabilitation services, which include assessment, monitoring, intervention, and such. The tool I'm presenting today will focus on monitoring the progress of patients. So why tele-rehabilitation? Stroke can have a severe impact on a person's quality of life and can lead to consequences such as motor loss. Early access to stroke rehabilitation has shown to play an important role in improving an elderly individual's quality of life while recovering from stroke. However, Obstacles such as mobility restrictions, access to transport, or a global pandemic can get in the way of patients attending outpatient rehabilitation. Tele-rehabilitation serves as a potential solution for these issues since it provides patients with access to physiotherapy in their own homes. Our system is unique in the sense that we aim to use the concept of auditory motor entrainment as part of our rehabilitation system. Entrainment is defined by a temporal locking process in which one system's motion or signal frequency is synchronized to the frequency of another system. In this context, we depend on the rhythm of music to provide cues to the brain and optimize movement patterns, resulting in movement with a similar frequency to the music being heard. This has been shown to be effective in gait rehabilitation among patients with Parkinson's and patients with multiple sclerosis. The use of rhythmic entrainment in upper extremity exercises has also shown the result in reduced variability in arm movements and smoother acceleration and velocity profiles, which means rhythmic entrainment to music can facilitate motor recovery in stroke patients, and these improvements can be quantitatively measured and visualized in terms of kinesthetic measures, such as acceleration and velocity profiles. Most similar visualization systems visualize metrics such as velocity over time, or change in distance between joints over time. Some categorize movements into positive, negative, and neutral types, and monitor the changes in movement types over sessions. Our work, as mentioned before, is unique in the sense that it centers around rhythmic entrainment for motor rehabilitation, and employs metrics which quantify consistency and smoothness of the user's actions. Let me give you a brief overview on how our entire system works. In our music-based tele-rehabilitation game, users play a game which involves rhythmic entrainment to music. They perform an exercise to short music clips about 15 to 20 seconds long. We will refer to the completion of exercise to one music clip as a trial. The session is made up of multiple trials done consecutively. 
In this instance, users are performing the abduction adduction exercise. More information on this game can be found at this link here at the bottom of the slide. So how this system works is that we have a game interface. While users play this game, movement data is captured by the Microsoft Kinect sensor, which is an infrared motion capture device. The movement data, along with some other game data, such as a score, is captured and stored. This data is then processed offline in the web engine before being presented on this front-end web tool I'm presenting today. So let me show you a brief video demo. Right at the get go, you get to see the user level metrics, such as the number of sessions the user has participated in, the amount of time the user has spent on the system, and the average score from all the user sessions. You then have an overview of each session, where you can see the user's performance across trials in one session from which you can go down to the metrics of each trial. For our system, we have displacement, velocity, autocorrelation, and precision as our metrics. Our system was designed with these objectives in mind. To provide insight on how frequently a patient is engaging with the system, to allow for comparisons of movement quality over time, to provide insight on movement quality across trials, and finally, to provide kinematic information about the movements made for a particular type of exercise. For our session level metrics, we use these two measures for a general view on the user's performance across trial within each session. The autocorrelation score is an indication of periodicity of movement pattern, and the smoothness score, as the name of the metric indicates, indicates how smooth the user's movement is. This is computed by the spectral arc length metric which measures the arc length of the Fourier magnitude spectrum of the velocity signal. In both cases, the higher the score, the better. We have four metrics for each trial, as I mentioned earlier, displacement, velocity, autocorrelation, and precision. We'll now take a closer look at what the visualizations look like. I'd like to highlight that these two displacement graphs are graphs from two different users, as will be the case for the following graphs you'll see in the coming slides. For our displacement charts, we visualize the position of the shoulder indicated by the purple line, the change in vertical displacement of the right hand indicated by the pink line, as well as the Z coordinate of the right hand indicated by the orange line. In this abduction adduction movement, ideally we'd like to see as little variation as possible in the right shoulder and in the Z coordinate of the right hand. Because a common compensatory movement is the elevation of the shoulder while performing this movement. You'll also notice vertical lines on the displacement charts. These lines indicate where the beat of the music falls. Users' hands should ideally reach the peak and the lowest positions at each of these lines. So in this case, the bottom graph would be showing a better performance as compared to the top graph. We include the visualization of the velocity curve as smoother velocity profiles are indicative of entrainment and better quality of movement. It has also been shown that as quality of movement improves, the velocity curve moves towards the form of a symmetric bell curve. The velocity visualization displays the highest velocities the user can attain and where along the movement cycle the peaks occur. 
In these cases, what we can see is that as compared to the person in the lower graph, the person in the upper graph is constantly in motion, while in the lower graph, the user's hand is mostly stationary, aside from sudden bursts of movement. The user in the top graph also manages to attain a higher peak velocity as compared to the user in the lower graph. For the autocorrelation metric, the movement of the user is correlated with itself as a measure of periodicity and as a measure of the consistency of the user's movement throughout the exercise. Here, in the first graph, the peaks are higher and the autocorrelation decays more slowly than in the second. We can infer from these that there is a higher level of periodicity in the first case than in the second. For our final metric, we take the amplitude spectrum of the user's movement. The ideal frequency is computed by using the tempo of the song. This visualization allows us to see how close the user's movement across the trial is to the ideal frequency. For instance, it can be observed that in the top graph, the user is much closer to the ideal frequency as compared to the user depicted in the bottom graph. In the future, we would like to validate our web tool's effectiveness with occupational therapists who are working with stroke patients. We also aim to include analysis for other movement types in our web system. Here are some of our references. And that will be all. Thank you.